Okay, honest talk here today, guys. I am critiquing my own work, and this is something I highly encourage every artist to do. It is also important to seek out advice from other artists that you admire and want to emulate, but it's equally important to take an honest look at your own work and ask yourself what's working, what's not working, and how can I make my next painting better? By the way, my name is Emily, and here on my channel, we do painting tutorials, art product reviews, and we talk about all things watercolor. So if that sounds good to you, hit that subscribe button right now. So I recently went on a trip to the Oregon coast with my twin sister. It was a paintcation. We went and painted. Check out this video if you want to see all the different plein air paintings I did during that trip. Also during the trip we did a lot of photography and I asked my twin sister to take some photos of me in this white dress on the beach with the intention of doing a series of self-portraits using these photographs. Unfortunately as soon as I got back from the trip I got sick. I got a really bad cold and you can probably still hear it in my voice a little bit but I couldn't record with voiceovers that whole week. I, it was driving me crazy. My productivity just went <clears throat> As you know, my full-time job is teaching watercolor and it involves a voice, which it's impossible when you're just blowing your nose all day and coughing. So I had some time on my hands to actually look at these photographs and work on these personal projects. As a side note, if you guys haven't watched this video about my watercolor fail, check that one out because in that video I mentioned that it's never a good idea to expect great things of yourself when you're sick. <laughs> and I didn't listen to my own advice and painted this while I was still sick, so I have to consider that that might affect the outcome. Not to say that this is a bad painting by any means, and I do consider it practice for the larger works that I want to do. So I always want to give myself grace, especially considering I did it when I was sick, and a lot of this was really new to me. And so here is the first one that I attempted from these reference photos that my sister took. So I just want to talk to you guys about what I like about this painting, what I don't like, and just kind of how to critique your own work so that you can come away from it feeling like you're ready for the next painting. All right, this painting was done on Fabriano Artistico 140 pound cold pressed paper. It was on an 18 by 24 inch block and so I actually have cut this out to size. It's 10 by 20 inches with this little half inch border added on to help if I decide to frame it. You guys can tell the paper is not bright white, it's the traditional white, so it's just a little bit of an off-white color, which I thought was appropriate since in all of these images, it was right around sunrise that we took these and the color is really muted, it's very hazy, there wasn't any bright sunlight, which makes it really difficult for a painter, honestly. Painting subjects in muted or overcast settings is way harder than painting sunlit subjects. But the mood I wanted to set with this painting involved introversion. <laughs> you can see the faces downcast, um, looking downward, very contemplative, very peaceful. There's some thoughtfulness in the expression that goes deeper than just peace or contemplativeness. And the goal with these paintings is to have the viewer be able to interpret the emotions any way they want, any way that kind of fits their own narrative. This is something I'm really trying to do more of and of course I'm inspired by my watercolor idol Steve Hanks who did a lot of paintings on the Oregon coast kind of similar to this. Um, he always dressed his models in white. Their faces where I was turned away or down. So I was trying to emulate that a little bit, but with my own spin on the narrative. My goal with this painting was to obviously make the figure the centerpiece, the focal point, and to have these wet and wet hazy rocks in the background and some of these rocks in the foreground to definitely be more detailed. And I really wanted to make this the most detailed part of the painting, which I think I really accomplished that. A really important thing about critiquing your own work is not just being negative about it. Really be positive about your work too. Find the things that you really like about your painting and find the things that you think you could do better. So it's a little bit of both. Really important not to be down on yourself or to say, oh, I suck, I'm a terrible painter. Leave out the negative self-talk. That should not be a part of your life as an artist. So yeah, just remember that a critique is not negative. It's an honest discussion of your work, what you could do better, and also the things that you like. We wanna come away from a self-critique with more information, more knowledge about our own artwork and our own process. Some things that I'm really happy with in this painting are the drapery. I had so much fun with these beautiful folds in the off-white dress. I really enjoyed painting this reflection in the water and adding the details of the stones. Some of this I moved around a little bit. I wasn't completely true to the reference photo. In fact, I did quite a lot of photoshopping before I jumped into this. It's really important to prepare your composition, especially if there's things in the original image that you don't really like. For example, this rock right here, I kind of moved it a little bit and 
the reason for that was that it was almost running tangent to this background rock right here in the original photo. So I pushed it this way a little bit so that these two would not be exactly aligned with each other. I also changed some of the shapes of the rocks themselves, but other than that, I really didn't change a whole lot. I may have brightened it up a little in Photoshop as well since these images were pretty dark. You can see in the skin tones, there's not a lot of detail in the face and in the arm in the shadow. It's so dark. To be honest, this part of the painting was the trickiest thing for me, trying to get those skin tones and the shadows correct. If I could do it all over again, I would have practiced painting this arm especially ahead of time. In fact, I'll show you guys. I did a second painting a little later and I went ahead and practiced the arm. I did three different skin tone studies and I was so much happier with my final result because I'd had a chance to test out my colors and practice those skin tones before jumping into the big painting. When I first started the painting, I started with the sky and I was actually really happy with the sky. I did that wet and wet. And while it was still wet, I blocked in my first rock. Now, this rock, if you look at it closely, you can tell it's really overworked. You can even see where I kind of scrubbed the paper quite a bit. I probably did three layers on this rock and scraped them out or wiped them out with a damp paper towel and tried again. My initial problem was that I was trying to use a Primatech color. I was using Hematite Gen Genuine, and it was so granulating it just wasn't doing what I wanted it to do and it was a color that's new to me so I wasn't comfortable with the color and I didn't know exactly how it would respond to the water and the wet and wet technique unfortunately it was just not the look I was going for on this rock now when I tried it again a second time on the other side you can see this result was so much better I used a mix of Daniel Smith ultramarine and burnt sienna for this rock and I also did it wet and wet but because I'm much more confident and comfortable with that color combination I think it turned out so much better and I also was able to get the timing right for that perfect soft edge. Another problem spot I had with this painting was this rock right behind the figure. It was the same issue of timing it so that I could get it soft enough and I wanted it to match this one but you can see the edges are a little too hard and a little harsh. You can see where I sort of scrubbed it and overworked it and just didn't get it the way I wanted it. Especially since it's bumped up against the arm that can be really tricky when you're trying to get a soft edge but you don't want it to mess with a figure in front of it and I just really Really struggled with that area. Hindsight is 2020. If I could do it again, I would definitely practice that rock <laughs> before jumping into my painting. The skin tones on the arm were a combination of burnt sienna and ultramarine blue, which usually I really like that combination and it worked in the face. Probably because it was such a small area, I was able to paint it really fast. But on the arm, it ended up getting overworked looking and sort of blotchy. So I'm just really not happy with those skin tones. Some things I really do like about this painting. I love how the water turned out, the wet sand in the foreground. I really like this rock in the front. And honestly, I didn't spend very much time on it. I just painted it quite quickly. I also really like the rocks in the background. I did use some Primatech colors for that, but it wasn't so wet on wet. It was more wet on dry. I used Jadeite Genuine for some of the green rocks over here and then I pretty much just stuck with my ultramarine blue, some indigo, some burnt sienna, and for the sand color, it's a combination of ultramarine blue and yellow ochre and some burnt sienna. So I tried to keep a really consistent color palette for the whole painting, and I'm really glad I did because the warm skin tones just pop. It's the one spot in the painting where you have those bright orange colors, and so it really helps the figure stand out. I'm really excited to do some more paintings like this. I have a whole series of photos to work from, and they're gonna be all different sizes, probably even larger than what you see here. Remember that if you don't like something, practice it. Just practice it over and over and it will get easier. You'll start to hit your stride and find some confidence in what you're doing as you continue to experiment and practice. Look at artists that you admire and want to emulate. For example, I had a Steve Hanks painting pulled up on my computer the whole time I was working so I could glance at it and kind of see what he does with the drapery and with the skin tones, with the water. And I found that to be really helpful. Having an image or a painting by an artist that you love can help influence your style while you're working. Remember, if you don't like something about the way you paint, you can change it. You can absolutely change it. Just take some practice, hard work, dedication, and the passion to keep going. Hope you guys enjoyed this honest little video. Check out these other videos about critiquing your work, and I'll see you over there.